Welcome to episode three of Rookie Gold Prospector. It's 22 degrees this morning, and a lot of people told me I was crazy for wanting to come up here and prospect for gold in this weather. That's why I got a card up in the top here for uh, the Flower Gold Wizards and a video where they were out there prospecting when it was minus 14. So if he can handle minus 14, I should be able to handle uh, 22 degrees. So this is the pile of pay that I'm gonna be working today. I'm gonna try to fill up about 10 buckets process them with the gold hog con box and then try to master this whole sluice box thing because my first attempt was pretty lousy so let's get started filling up buckets well, i got my first two buckets filled up uh looks like i'll be dealing with some frozen pay here today so that's pretty awesome but uh it's not gonna stop me all right if you didn't see my last video this is bucket number one right here I'm going to be putting all the uh, material in there, shaking it down, reducing it to the concentrates, and then dumping it in my empty bucket, saving up my cons to run through the sleep. Alright, so those buckets are empty. Put them through there, and that's how much cons I got left with. There's still some little tiny clay balls in there, but that's no problem. I'll get those busted up. So, let's fill up the next two buckets and keep on moving. Alright, there's buckets three and four full. Ready to go in there, and then go in there. Go ahead and try to do 11 buckets today. That's a quarter yard for one person. That's pretty good, so let me get back at it. So anybody thought that I would be cold, you're sadly mistaken, because I've run four buckets so far, and I'm sweating like crazy. Buckets five and six, ready to go. Bucket seven and bucket eight going right in there into there bucket nine and bucket ten let's do it again so i definitely think i got a much better place for my sluice box i got my little uh, con box sitting upside down there helping me get the right angle everything looks pretty even I have even my flow right here i may have too much flow that could be the only problem that i have so i'm going to start scooping material slowly and just check it out, see what happens to it. I mean, I'm probably way too heavy on the flow. Way too heavy. I mean, I still got some material building up on the ripples, behind the ripples. Maybe I'm doing just fine. I don't know, it definitely looks like it's blasting, and that's really turbulent. I'm going to lift it up just a little bit. This is pretty relaxing right here. Looking pretty good.
you guys can tell me what you think, but I'm pretty sure this is way too turbulent, but I am having some buildup behind the riffles, but I'm pretty sure I'm just blowing everything right out the end, because most of it's going to be fine gold, but I won't really know until at the end if I have any gold or not. All right, 11 buckets. Put the classified material through the sluice box. I'm gonna clean this out, see what we can get. we go all right so I'm all done running 11 buckets this is what I got left in terms of concentrates I think I had my sluice running too fast so I may have blown all that fine gold right out of the end of the sluice but it's a learning experience but we really won't know till we get home pan everything out and see if it pans out well I'm back at the house it's the next day I did find a little bit of gold yesterday, but uh, there's another clip I want to show you from last Sunday where I actually found a vein and um, broke off a little sample of it. So let's go to it. But this is cracked right here, so uh, it's really going to be hard to get that. Ooh, there it goes. Wow. And this is the quartz vein right here. Uh, wow. That's going to be easy to break a piece off of that. I won't know until I dig that out of there, but that's that's part of a quartz vein right there. And it continues all the way up. So let's dig it up. I mean, right there, you can really see it. That is the epithermal vein right there. And there's where I took the sample from. And that continues up. I don't know how far it goes or where it goes, but I'm definitely going to be following that one up at some point. Seeing what's in there. And I'm going to see if I can break off the 
rock there around that vein. Get another sample of that out. I really want to check that out. Look at that mineralization right there. I cannot wait to crush this stuff up. Got a pretty good piece of it broken off, so take that home as a sample. Check it out. Crush that all up. And, well, with any luck, there could be gold inside there. I did crush up about two pounds of this material, and I found one little tiny speck of gold. Here's another little sample where you can see the quartz a little bit better. I'm not sure what the rest of these minerals are because I'm not a geologist, but I'm going to dig up some more of this and see if it gets any better as I go up further. Also, you might be wondering about these paintings right here. These were painted by my favorite person in the whole world. This is the first painting that you saw in the background. This is a fish inside a kelp forest. And the artist wants to be a marine biologist when she grows up, so this fits perfectly with that theme. So this one right here has a video clip that goes with it. I believe it's a copper-bellied water snake, but uh, let's cut to that video real quick. Hey, buddy. Hey, what are you doing? What kind of snake are you? Yeah, what kind of snake? I don't even know. Me either. Yeah, and we don't have to be scared because I don't want to get a whole lot closer because even if he's not venomous, it doesn't mean he can't bite. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes their bites can have a lot of bacteria in them that can give you an infection. So we don't want to do that. Let's see where he wants to go. Whoa. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> I scared him. Where are you going to go, buddy? Up there in the woods. I don't know. He's so cool. Oh, this hill might be a little steep for him. He's I, I, I think he might be a little scared. Oh, he's trying to go in that hole. He's trying to go the easy way. If there wasn't, if there was a, he's trying to go up there. I know it. He's so cool. He's a big one too. Now he's not a small snake, is he? No. He's trying to hide. Yeah, he looks very camouflaged right there, doesn't he? You know what? He, I think I know why he's trying to hide. Yeah. He's looking for some bugs. And... Well, I know, but he sees us as a threat. He's actually really scared of us because we're so much bigger than he is. But he, right? So, but he's a little scared for us. Yeah. We don't know what comes. You know what? So that's why I think we should leave him alone. Well, here's all that I found. Definitely wasn't worth all of the work that I did. The pile I was digging from was actually a pile from a group dig. I found good gold in it uh, in the last episode, but I must have dug in the wrong place. Definitely wasn't worth all that work. But it was worth it for the learning experience. I'm pretty sure I lost all of the fine gold that I found by running my sluice too quickly. And I also spent a lot of time digging in a spot that I didn't know there was a lot of gold or which part of the pile the gold came from. So definitely lessons learned and I'll be improving every trip that I take. Well, that's it for today. On the next episode, I'll be going up to the Chattahoochee National Forest and um, doing some prospecting up there. But until then, go Chiefs.